Story time. I was in the U.S. Coast Guard many years ago, running drug patrols along the Columbia Bar in Astoria, Oregon. We were underway one time during extremely bad weather, rain, thunder, high seas, choppy waves, high-velocity winds, poor visibility. I was at the helm during one of my first steering watches, driving the boat they called it, and it was pretty crazy. During weather like that, if you don't know, the bow of the ship rises and lowers as you crest each wave, and the bigger the wave the bigger the up and down movement. I can't remember what that movement is called, anyone? Anyway, I was at the helm, doing my thing, the duty officer was on watch with me. As the ship's bow went up, we were literally looking at the sky, there was a flash of lightning and I saw what looked like a pterodactyl trying to roost on the highest mast. Big wings, weird shaped head, flapping as it tried to gain purchase. Of course it was probably a big seabird of some kind, but I clearly remember my brain at the time screaming pterodactyl at me. And of course, like all good monster sightings, the thing was gone when I finally convinced the duty officer to check it out. So, you know, sailors have always seen weird shit. I have a story of a creature on my hunting land from when I was a kid. When I was about 10 years old I was hunting with my grandfather, now deceased, on family-owned land near Covington, Minnesota. It was near dusk and we'd been sitting for a couple hours. Now we haven't seen much just a spiker and a small doe nothing large enough to shoot. We were starting to lose hope and were getting ready to start the about one mile trek back to our cabin. As we were preparing to leave we heard some twigs cracking from our right rear side. The stand we were in was tucked in the rear corner of a large clearing on one of the bigger trees in the tree line. As the cracks from the twigs got closer I remember realizing that all other ambient noises stopped. When the creature finally emerged from the tree line I remember my heart feeling like it stopped working and an overwhelming feeling of dread wash over me. What I saw was what looked to be a small buck that looked like it hadn't eaten in weeks, and was an extremely pale brown almost gray with what looked to be a broken neck and a missing antler stumble into the clearing. At this time the sun was just about to sink below the tree tops and cover the clearing with shadows. I recall looking over at my grandfather and seeing a level of fear I have never seen on his face before. Mind you my grandfather was tough and fearless as they come being. He'd seen active duty in Vietnam as infantry. After seeing my grandfather's face it just made the feeling in my stomach become worse. As we watched this deer stumble into the clearing, my grandfather reached for his binoculars. As he pulled them out, the lens cover made a small noise on the side of the stand. The creature must have heard it because it stopped its stumble, now in the middle of the clearing, and creepily rotated around and rose up on its hind legs and stared directly at us, for about a minute before running off in an creepily awkward sprint into the woods. At this time it felt like I just had gotten the wind knocked out of me and I was petrified with fear. After the encounter me and my grandfather sat in the stand completely silent staring at the clearing trying to make sense of what we just witnessed. As we started to walk back we heard extremely weird almost human sounding noises coming from the woods around us. By the time we got back to the cabin my grandfather decided it'd be best to call our trip early and head back home. But before we left I had to use the bathroom and our cabin was quite old so I didn't have indoor plumbing just an old outhouse. As I sat down to use the toilet, the immense feeling of dread returned as I heard human-like whispers and small scratches on the back of the outhouse. I screamed at the top of my lungs to my grandfather as I ran out of the outhouse crying. After that we drove back home and had a small discussion on what we saw. Despite being an avid hunter, that was my grandfather's last season of hunting and about a year later we sold the land. I've told this story a couple times to close friends and family but I think most of them think I'm crazy especially being the only witness now that my grandfather passed away. Still to this day the encounter sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it.
This happened a couple months ago and I didn't think anything strange of it at the time but after talking to multiple people including my father. I'm not very confident in what I saw anymore and I'm looking for some help. So I work third shift at UPS, Richwood, Kentucky. I was driving a buddy of mine home a couple miles out, and had just started driving home. I was in the Beech Grove area near some apartment buildings on a back road, when about 30 to 40 feet in front of my car I watched a creature dash across the road. I stopped my car to look at it, it stopped in someone's yard, turned back at me and made eye contact with me for about 10 seconds. I went to take a picture and it ran. At first I thought it was the first fox I had ever seen, but after some research online it looks nothing like foxes native to Kentucky. This fox was about three and a half feet tall, very slender with long skinny legs. It didn't look malnourished though, it looked very healthy. Solid black eyes with pointy diagonal ears that were tipped black, with the lower half of its legs being black, and the tip of its tail being black. It was about 4 a.m. and perch black outside, but there were plenty of porch and street lights for me to see it. It was also decently foggy that night. The only species of fox I found online that looks like it is one that's native to Africa, and extinct. Since this encounter almost two years ago, I've seen three other wild foxes in the area. Two were as described by Google, much smaller than the one I saw. The third one I saw was about 5 minutes out from my house and it looked just like the massive fox but slightly shorter. A friend of mine brought up the idea of it being a skinwalker, so I thought I'd post this here to get thoughts from anyone that would have any kind of idea for me, since I've heard stories of skinwalkers being in Kentucky. We live in Utah and my uncle, Mark, went on a mission at 19. They sent him to an Indian reservation in Arizona. They paired him up with a companion named Carl. When they first got there, there was a huge rift with the locals on the reservation with them being there. They didn't want my uncle and Carl staying on the reservation grounds. Eventually they came to a compromise that they would stay on the outskirts in a trailer. This reservation wasn't very big and was located next to a heavily wooded area. The first night, they were trying to sleep when all of the sudden their trailer started to shake violently back and forth. Startled and not sure what was happening, they climbed under their table for cover. Mark could distinctively hear someone pushing it from both sides of the trailer, like a group of people. After about five minutes, it stopped. That next day, they made rounds on the reservation and were talking to the locals. Carl made a comment to one of the families that their trailer was shaking that night before. The family got very quiet and then told them they had to leave. They thought it was strange, but didn't think much of it. The next night it happened again. They awoke to their trailer shaking back and forth. Again they climbed under the table until it stopped. This went on for two more nights. Anytime they tried to talk to anyone about it, they got quiet and told them to leave. Mark started thinking that, due to the tension of their arrival, the locals were doing this to scare them off the reservation. They then go into a convenience store and they were talking together about how frustrated they were with the situation. The clerk overheard and said, they can't talk about it. It's forbidden. Confused, they ask him, can't talk about what? The guy continues to tell them about the skinwalkers. He says they are evil demons that were once Native American witches. If they talk about it, the skinwalkers will come for their souls. They just walked out of their baffled. They thought it was another scare tactic. So that night, when the shaking started again, my uncle decided to be brave and confront them. He went to the trailer door, flew it open, and yelled hey. When he did that, he saw these three animals run off. Two were a wolf one was a bear. But they looked strange. Almost with human features. As he watched them run towards the trees, all three stood up on two legs, and walked slowly towards the trees making a human cackling laugh. It scared him so bad that they called their mission president that next morning and asked to be moved. They were relocated that day. For a year nothing happened. One day, 
They announced that Carl was being relocated to another city and Mark was getting a new companion, Jimmy. They had to drive for about an hour to pick Jimmy up from the airport. The road they traveled went through the boundaries of the reservation. They arrived at about 8 p.m. and met Jimmy, and they go to leave. The mission president tells Jimmy, we are driving through a dangerous area at night, so we can't make any stops. If you need to use the restroom, you need to go now. Jimmy says, I am fine. The mission president gets serious enough to even freak out Mark, I am not kidding, go to your business. Jimmy was insistent he was fine. So they hit the road. As they were about 30 minutes into the drive, they were going through the area of the reservation boundaries, Jimmy starts complaining that he needed to pee badly. The mission president says, we can't stop here. You'll have to hold it. Jimmy keeps going on, I really can't hold it. So the mission president stops the car and says, okay, but you will do your business next to the door, and if I say get into the car, you better get into the car fast. With a look of confusion, Jimmy says, all right. Opens the door, and starts to do his business. About five seconds later the mission president says nothing and just yanks Jimmy into the car and floors it. Jimmy and Mark start freaking out, what is going on? The mission president says nothing and just increases his speed. All of a sudden, Mark sees something next to the car to his right. A giant wolf-looking man was running on two feet next to the car. Mark looked at the speedometer, they were going over 60 miles an hour and still increasing. The wolf creature kept right next to the car for 10 minutes until it finally took off into the trees. Shaking, Jimmy gets out of the car when they arrive, they didn't speak through the whole ordeal, and says, what did I just see? The mission president says, next time I tell you to take care of your business, you take care of your business. We was walking through the woods in Tuskegee, Alabama in the Tuskegee National Forest going duck hunting. While we were walking we stopped for a quick minute to rest and I looked up and seen something flash before my eyes, as we got to our destination at the swamp. We looked to our left and saw something walking across the beaver dam. We do not believe it acknowledged our presence. We would describe it as a tall, wide, black from head to toe creature walking upright on two legs trying to quickly get into the woods. Also looked like as if he were carrying a large object in one hand. It was time to go after that. The hunt was over. One particular instance stands out as the most unnerving thing I've experienced. It's one thing to see a sign warning about a predator in the area. It's another thing to be stalked by it all day. I went out one afternoon on my small John boat to do some fishing in the swamp, mainly for Warmoth. I was pretty familiar with the area, and motored out three to four miles to reach my favorite spot. Alligators are fairly commonplace out there, and it's just something you become accustomed to. Generally, if you respect them, they'll respect you, as they've become pretty used to fishermen. The water in the swamps are full of tannic acid from the decaying leaves on the bottom, so the water looks inky black at first, and visibility is only a few inches. Anything that is visible just under the surface is tinted a dark amber color. I had caught a few fish, and noticed that around 50 to 60 yards back up the canal, a pair of eyes floating just above the water was pointed my direction. It was a gator, no big deal. They've learned to be opportunistic and steal stringers of fish if you leave them hanging over the side of the boat. I continued fishing for a few minutes and had just reached down over the side of the boat to grab the lip of a warmoth I'd hooked. As I pulled the fish out, I saw the faintest glint of amber in the water, about a foot below where my hand had just been. I watched as the faint glint slowly rose up towards the surface of the water, revealing two black eyes and the largest jaw on any gator I've ever seen in the wild. I slid back to the center of my small john boat as the head of the gator broke the surface. I could feel its back sliding along the bottom of my boat, shifting it slightly. After watching it for 10 to 15 seconds, it finally swam out from under the boat. I'm guessing it was pushing 12 to 13 feet, 
and that's after having seen hundreds of gators. This gator followed me the rest of the day. I'd motor ahead a ways, just to put some distance between us and not long after I'd stop, I'd feel that familiar bump on the bottom of the boat again. Each time, it would eventually just swim off a few feet to turn and stare at me. I've never felt more outmatched. This dark, quiet, toothy bastard had the ability to sneak up on you any time it pleases and get within three feet of you before you ever know it's there. Do you know how unnerving it is to look something in the eye at that makes it abundantly clear that it's only waiting for you to make a mistake? There's a level of intelligence and focus in those eyes that makes you understand your place in the food chain. It's not the first time gators have followed me, I've been followed by three at one time before. But none have ever made me so intimately aware that the only thing on its mind was to drag me out of my boat and under the surface of that black water. I had just gotten up from sleeping and was putting on clothes for the AM. Fishing with my friend. I was standing and looking out the upper bedroom window and saw a large grayish, brown hairy figure trotting through the edge of the woods towards the log cabin and turned to trot across the earth dam. I immediately went downstairs and asked my friend if he was attempting to play a joke but he was already down at the boat in another direction. The figure had been jogging or trotting at a moderate pace with a hunched over stance and I witnessed it for 6 to 10 seconds before it disappeared across the lake. I am a Marine Corp veteran from Vietnam and I have better than 20-20 vision I have been on many fishing trips in the area for about 10 years. When the figure was moving through the tree area it looked as though it was brushing some of the limbs with its body. I was driving back home from my friend's place in rural western MA around 1-2 AM I was driving through this area that's about 3 quarters of a mile long that's just a long canopy of dense trees. Dark even in the day but at night, it's pitch black. You can barely see 20 feet in front of you even with high beams on. Anyway, driving, about 6 feet away from the side of the road 100 feet ahead of me I see something that looks wrong in a way I can't explain. You know when something doesn't make sense to you or you know something isn't right. Like the parasympathetic feeling we get when we see someone break their ankle, we know it isn't supposed to bend that way so it gives us the heebie-jeebies. It was like that, but I wasn't sure why until I was 30 feet away from it. It was this coyote standing on its hind legs and was way too tall to be an actual coyote standing upright. Coyotes are the size of a very small lab like 50 pounds on a good day if that, this thing was at least 6 feet standing. It made me feel nauseous just looking at it. It was too tall and its face was wrong. It looked humanoid, the same way we recognize human faces as being human. I had that feeling like I was looking at a person but it wasn't totally human. It reminded me of cat eye syndrome but at least that is explainable. This wasn't. Anyway, I spent way too long being as close as I was to that thing as it stared at me, but I gunned it out of there and locked the hell out of my house when I got home despite being around 20 miles away from where I saw it. I don't know what it was, but it freaked the F out of me. I was staying at the Marriott Hotel 6th floor in Huntsville, Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center. At 5.40 AM on February 24, 2009 I went on the balcony to drink my coffee as the room was too stuffy and hot. I was out there just thinking and staring off at the woods when something caught my eye, after refocusing on it I realized there were legs, then arms, then I could clearly make out his face. The creature stood 6 to 7 feet tall and was staring directly back at me it seemed to have fine hairs all over grey color hair that got more black as the hair got closer to the skin the tips of the hair were much lighter the face, lips, eyelids, etc. were more of a very dark brown it stood very erect, was very muscular, and did not seem to have the ape-like protruding mouth and nose but more flat-faced human-like, after 30 seconds he started rocking back and forth. I then realized this was moving and could in no way be mistaken for a deer or bear or anything else. 
This was a fully erect ape-like animal that seemed to want me see him. He was rocking back and forth from side to side. After the initial 30 seconds he rocked for about 10 to 12 seconds then stood and stared at me. I was on the 6th floor about 120 yards away in decent lighting due to hotel lights and street light behind loading area of hotel he then would stare back then he would remain face forward with feet only about 2 feet apart would lean over to his left with his right arm would start pulling bark off a very large pine tree. It looked as if someone were in a sawing position then he would stand up stare at me then rock and then pull bark. This was done in that order three times over a five to six minute period. After five minutes of re-verifying what I was looking at I felt this creature was docile and smooth moving. I decided I would try and get a closer look. As I opened the sliding glass door he stared and I stared back. I ran out of the hotel room and there was security in our hall laying the morning news at the hotel room doors. I asked him to come with me and asked for backup since he had no gun. We ran around the corner outside, as we were running I finally got the nerves to tell them what I saw. We get to the reference points I had chosen and there were a lot of fresh bark removed from the large pine tree. I tried to pull bark from it to no avail. It was too hard I am 6 feet 4, 300 pounds I went back after 7 am, light. I did notice what looked like scat. It took the form of explosive diarrhea and looked like a hundred birds had pooped in a small area. Like in a shotgun pattern heavy in the middle and lighter to the outside perimeter. I put a large handful in a Marriott laundry plastic bag. It looks like feces and digested berries and seeds. It was dry although it had rained the night before, one of the Marriott employees saw two large footprints, more like deep indentions in the pine straw. I took off my shoe and placed my foot in it and there was about a 1 inch area all the way around my foot in order to fill the indention. Something very heavy had to make these indentions. I tried and I am 300 pounds and could not. I am 100% positive of the above description. I watched this clearly for 5 to 6 minutes. I was out at my grandparents' house, hunting coyotes, as usual, this time of year. I was hiking through my next door neighbor's land, to get to the wood covered land in the back. While I was hiking, I got the feeling I was being followed by something to my right. I stopped and switched the red tin on my headlamp to my spotlight but didn't see anything. Then I switched back to my headlamp and pulled my rifle back up and continued my hike. It was 6.15 am and the sun was just coming up. I was sitting in a hide I'd made the day before. That's when I saw something behind a group of trees on my left. It was crouched. I raised my rifle, looked through my scope and froze when I saw the creature staring back at me. I panicked and fired a shot off. That's when it stood up and took off, deeper into the woods. I sat there probably another 25 minutes before I decided it was safe to head in and did so. Later that day, I grabbed my grandfather and we both went out to where I had seen the creature when it stood up on two legs and took off. We measured where I had seen it and it was roughly seven and a half feet tall. To this day, I'm terrified to go out at night or in the early morning hours. I wanted to share a story of an encounter me and a bunch of friends had back in 1968. To this day I still think about it, kind of hard to forget no matter how hard I've tried. Anything I say today must be understood as the words of someone only 11 years old. But I'll try to make myself as clear as I can. On a summer evening in 1968, an older cousin, a group of friends and I decided to play baseball at a nearby baseball field. The field was about four to five blocks away from where I lived at 3621 Richmond Avenue and the field was southeast from my house. Anyway, we all got together and were playing. There wasn't enough of us to play team to team match up, so we were rotating one pitcher, one fielder, and the catcher, while the rest batted. There are some train tracks that ran parallel to the baseball field, I mention this because of what happened next. My time came up to pitch and my older cousin was fielding. 
One buddy hit a foul ball and it went over the fence towards the railroad tracks. By then it was getting a little past dusk, though, the field lights weren't too bad. There was a man standing close to where the ball rolled to a stop. My cousin ran towards the fence and yelled at the man to throw the ball back to us. He ignored my cousin so I ran over and yelled as well. The rest of the guys came over and we started to cuss the guy out for ignoring us. None of us wanted to get near the guy though. Something about him didn't feel right. One of the guys picked a rock and threw it at what we thought was a bum. The rock came close but didn't hit the guy. Then a group of guys started to throw rocks, that's when the crap hit the fan. This guy? Turned towards us slowly and dropped to all fours. What we all saw next, by the dim field lights, was not a man but a snarling wolf-like creature. My cousin was the first to react by yelling werewolf. And he turned and ran followed by the rest of us. We ran as a group. Some were lucky and made it home first. Peeling off from the rest of us one by one. My cousin and a friend ran to my house and spent the night. We told my parents what we had seen and of course, they blew us off. My mom told us what you probably saw was the devil himself for staying out past dusk. Being Hispanic we always had holy water around the house. We blessed the house and especially my bedroom. None of us slept that night and any noise would make us jump. The next morning, we, all the guys, screwed up enough courage to go back to investigate. We found our ball where it had landed but no visible tracks of anything else. Everyone but me agreed that we had seen a werewolf. I kept asking how could it have been a werewolf if there was no full moon last night? Have dog men sightings been reported near El Paso? And no, I don't want to be on your show or be identified. The very few people I've told over the years have either laughed at me or thought I was crazy. I'm an old man now but I needed to get this off my chest. When I was about 8 or 10 years old, I saw a Bigfoot. It was on Green Mountain near Huntsville, Alabama. It was unpopulated then. Now there are million dollar homes there. I was on my way home from my uncle's house on a gravel road. I was on one side of a hill. The road went down this hollow and back up the other side. In the ditch line was Bigfoot, about 8 feet tall with arms that looked like they reached down past his knees. It was slightly leaned forward looking straight at me. It scared the daylights out of me. So I went back to my uncle's house and told him. He got his shotgun and we went back. It was still there looking at us. Uncle threw up the gun to shoot and I told him we needed to get closer. So we went down the hill and as we did we lost sight. When we got back up the other side it was gone. I was driving on an unpaved backcountry road at about 50 miles per hour. Suddenly there was something in front of my driver's side headlight. I didn't see it until it was there. I didn't see it running across the road. It was like it just showed up, poof. It was traveling to the left. I caught that glimpse of it and then it was gone. I had hit the brakes when I saw it, so I was then going around 20 miles per hour and looked in the direction it went and saw nothing. It was flat, salt grass prairie with no trees so I should have been able to see it. At the time with the knowledge I had, the only name I had for it was werewolf. Now I would call it dog man. It was a bipedal, black wolf. Its legs were really skinny, backwards looking, and it was hunched over so that the arms hung low. It was at least 5 feet tall bent over like it was. If it was standing, I would guess it would gain at least a foot and a half. It had a thick torso, but not too thick, with long hair like a small cape across the shoulders and upper back down to the end of shoulder blades. The rest of its body was covered with short hair, or almost hairless. It had a shaggy tail. I was walking home from fishing, taking a different trail. As I got about two-thirds roads. Up the hill I had the hair on my neck stand up and a feeling like I was being watched. This was around 5 PM. I just casually kept walking till I got home always checking my back. 
It happened again within a week. Maybe a few days. Did not smell anything cause I had been fishing or no smell anyway. Wasn't long afterwards I was checking on the clouds of a thunderstorm when lightning struck close to the trailer. By this I mean I had my head out the door. I heard a yell about 70 yards. Behind the trailer. It didn't sound like a cow but I checked anyway. No cows had been in the area for at least 6 months. The scream was high pitched without coming down a lot at the end. With my wife being there, I just closed the door and didn't say nothing. I would say the following Sunday afternoon, my wife went to church at 6 p.m., and I stayed home to watch TV. About 45 minutes later, I was laying on the couch watching TV, when something had blacked out my window at the far end of my trailer. The window was one foot wide and three feet tall. I had raised up to look out my picture window above the couch and it turned the corner and walked around the steps at the back door. It was looking off into the woods and as it kept walking, it looked at the ground. Understand this though, I had clear plastic on my window to keep heat in from winter. Hadn't taken it down yet, when it got to the window, I had already laid back down on the couch, looking up and lay still. It looked down at me and kept walking, hopefully. I laid there for about as long as I could stand maybe a minute. Then I got off the couch by sliding on the floor, went and got my gun walked back in the living room and waited a minute, then went outside making all noise I could. I checked the back of the trailer, nothing there. Details of Bigfoot is as follows, he was about 7 feet tall maybe 7 feet point three. Solid black, no white or brown that I could see. Remember the plastic. His head was more rounded and not cone shaped. I could not see the color of his eyes or anything like that. He was broad shouldered and thinner around the waist than what you usually see in the pictures and he walked more upright, not humped over like a gorilla. His hands hung around his thighs. The next morning around 10 AM, I got up from bed as I worked 2 RD. Shift then. My wife told me a friend of mine had come down to see me. I asked what did he want. She said she only saw him as the top of his head went across the kitchen window. We had to set the trailer on four blocks high and three on the other end, which meant you could not see anyone walking in front of the trailer, not out the kitchen window anyway. I told her my friend was 6FT4 and with a hat on you could not see him the way she had told me. We lived on rocky ground but I had one dusty dirt spot at the end of the trailer. Hoping he had walked in it. I checked and in the middle was a footprint. It was about 12 and a half inches long and 3 and half to 4 inches wide at the heel. Being dust it was only 1 quarter deep. There were only 3 toes which I did not understand at the time. I told some friends at work and one came to see it. The following Friday or Saturday night, he and a friend of his came over, no drinking sorry. And I told them the whole story. My friend was not hard to convince but his friend started talking big. So I told them let's go outside. Joking around to see how brave he was when we heard two dogs about medium to small size started barking and chasing something on the other ridge behind my trailer which was not far at all, maybe 200 yards they chased it into the small valley about 50 yards south of us. When one dog quit barking, the other gave one more than it was quiet. Stunned, we looked at each other and Bigfoot started running back towards us. It stopped about 80 yards from us and started to hit a tree with something that sounded like a branch about 4 to 5 inches thick. Then it ran closer to about 40 yards. And done the same thing again. By this time all bravery was gone. I went back in the trailer and got my gun. Come back out and asked if anything had happened. The brave guy thought he might had seen something in the shadow south of us, light was on of course. They took the gun away from me and I didn't mind, thinking I had a way of escape. But we heard nothing else. My nearest neighbor is about 250 yards away. Mother-in-law, no one else for at least a mile. No reason to mess with us that I could even think of. That was the last I have seen or heard of him. My encounter occurred 20 or so years ago, way before what I saw even had a name. 
My encounter with what you call dog man happened one afternoon as my family and I were returning home from shopping in town. I was living in a little town in East Texas at the time and we lived about 10 solid minutes from any real signs of civilization. The town itself at the time had a population of around 500 and it took 10 minutes of dirt road driving just to get to the gas station slash general store. The nearest town was called Lufkin and its population at the time was around 30k. We were heading home and we were on the first part of the longest dirt road we had to travel down. There were several large hills that would make your stomach churn if you hit them too fast. We had just gone over the first one of them on our journey home, when I saw something up ahead. At first, I thought it was a deer. It was large and brown and was jumping over a barbed wire fence on the right side of the road. It leapt over the barbed wire fence and managed to not only clear the fence, but landed roughly in the middle of the road. This already made me perk up a little, as that was an impressive jump. Even if it was a deer. As we got closer. Whatever this was took another impressive lunge and made its way to the other side of the road. Just shy of the barbed wire fence on the other side. It never stopped, but continued up the embankment. I could swear that as it propelled itself up the side, it looked back at us, over its left shoulder. As if it were deciding who slash what we were. Not sure. About 15 years ago, my wife and two children were leaving our home in Honeycomb just north of Guntersville off of Highway 431 at the bottom of Grand, Alabama. We were en route to Walmart. About 8 to 9 p.m. probably midsummer. A well-lit seems full moon night. We lived for me. Around past the lake in Honeycomb. I was driving my old hot rod a 1964 Ford. There are some persons by the last name of, name removed by investigator, WHO always have dogs in the street at their house by the lake. The road white elephant RD. Run by the water's edge in front of their home. The road is about 4 FT off of the shoreline. The, name removed by investigator, S had two St. Bernard dogs along with their other dogs. That particular night driving past I saw in the water walking away from the road and shore a large 8 FT Sasquake. I looked back in my rearview mirror, and still turned around to look THRU my back glass. My wife saw my dismay, and quickly asked what's wrong, she at that time looked back, I always drive slow by their house as the dogs are always in the road, so she had time to look, all she saw was the ripples in the water, as we passed a few trees. It was a full moon night, and no wind calm waters. Now what I saw was the 8FT Sasquatch carrying one of the St. Bernard heads. I in the time that drove by slowly saw the Bigfoot from the knees up, carrying the head of the dog, some flesh was hanging from the neck area. The head was in the Bigfoot's left hand. He was carrying IT from the dog hair at the top of the dog head. I said to my wife at that time that if one of those dogs came up missing that the Sasquatch was the reason why. However both dogs came up missing and we never saw them again after that time. Now story up to date. Telling the story to many persons in the years passing, as people tell stories, I finally told the guys at the TVA where I work as a contractor for the government. My relationship with Mr. Name removed by investigator, is just knowing each other from the window of our vehicle as we would wave to one another, as our children rode the school bus with each other. I finally one day about 4 YRS ago asked him what happened to his dogs, and told him the story of what I saw. He said one of the dogs died in Huntsville, Alabama at his mother's home, and the other died at his home in Honeycomb and he buried IT behind his house. Now, I didn't push the issue of letting me dig up the dog's core as it would be kind of tacky. But if you guys want to contact me and send some investigators to check and see if Mr. Name removed by investigator, would allow you to dig up the core to see if its head is missing, you may get some clues or even some hair form the Sasquatch. However if the head is still attached, then I was hallucinating the whole thing, and my wife would just imagine the water ripples too. I don't do drugs, or smoke dope, and didn't at that time either. 
The only thing running THRU my veins is good wholesome Native American blood. I would love to participate in pursuing this investigation if there will be one. My stepdad lived in Virginia when he was around the age of eight. Right on the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp. According to him, he was in bed one night when the sky was cloudless, or just very bright, he never thought until recently whether the moon was shining, or not, and saw a beast looking right through his window at him. He said, he could see spittle running down its face and its eyes were looking straight at him. It was supposedly standing on its hind legs and had cream, red, and brown colored, matted fur and a face almost like a wolf. Other than its snout, its facial features were very human. Its jaw bones were high, the structure around its eyes and its eyes themselves were human esquire the coloring of its eyes, he believes, were yellow. The reason why I think this is interesting and possibly valid is because, the Great Dismal Swamp covers a huge amount of territory and is hardly touched by humans. Only in recent years have people started to study its inhabitants. The grounds are wet, mossy, and absorb sound. And people have been known to wander into it and never return. Who knows what could be lurking in the unknown. Chills my bones. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that he crawled out of his bed and went straight to his mother's room. In the morning, when they looked around the house, all the windows had ground that was stirred up under them and grass that was yanked out. There were actual scratches in the wood under his window, and paint was missing too. However, as far as they could see, there were no discernible footprints. My first encounter happened late at night, while driving home to Snohomish from Sultan. The two towns being about 10 miles apart. I was with my mother and we had just finished dropping a friend off at her home in Sultan. It was late October and there was an unusual storm going on that night that everyone talked about the following day. Tremendous cloud to cloud lightning and a very cold dry wind with no rain. Bright flashes of light, loud thunder and lots of leaves blowing around. After dropping our friend off, we were on a stretch of the road that's very dark, with farmland on either side of the highway, Highway 2, and both sides having densely wooded hills. We were driving a 1991 Honda Accord and at this one particular spot in the road, something caught my eye, off to the left side, which was a farm field and there was a break in the guard rail for a dirt road going into the field. Right when we were even to this break, I saw what looked like a huge dog coming up, and right then, it ran in front of our car and I hit it. We could see the top of its back, which we both swear looked more like a hyena at this point than a dog. It had to be huge to see its back over the hood of the car, when you're sitting pretty low to the ground in a Honda Accord. Its fur was shaggy brown and mottled with dark spots, just like a hyena and its front seemed higher up than its back. The headlights lit it up as it ran right in front of our car and we could feel it get hit, but didn't see it go either up in the air or off to the right side of the car. It was running from the left side of the highway to the right. We were driving westward. It sent my car into an uncontrollable swerve back and forth into the oncoming lane and I just prayed that I could get it under control, to keep from getting into a head-on collision with what looked like maybe a Ford Aerostar van. A calmness came over me and I felt like my guardian angel had taken control of the steering, because we missed the van by just a few inches. After going a little ways further, we were both so shook up I pulled off to the side. My mother wanted to go look for the dog, because we both love animals and felt bad about hitting something. But, I had a bad feeling about looking for this dog, because it had looked so strange and I was afraid of it. It was dark and stormy. It didn't feel safe and I just wanted to get home. We got back in the car and stopped at a little gas station, when we first got into Monroe which is the next town between our town and Sultan. We got out, to look at the front of my car, thinking surely there would be some evidence of hitting something that large, we were going the highway speed when we hit it which is 60 miles per hour, like a dent, some fur or blood, but there was nothing there. Not a scratch. The whole thing had a very supernatural feel to it. 
The look of this dog which was huge and looked more like a hyena just didn't seem right. Neither did the timing of it running in front of us, like it wanted to make us stop on that dark stretch of road and get out of my car, which we did, but we got right back in. I never saw it on two legs. It ran on all fours, but there was something so calculated about the way it came up to the highway and looked at our car and ran in front of it. It seemed planned. It was such a strange electromagnetic type of storm that night too. The next day, people we knew that lived miles and miles apart in many different directions all talked about the storm and one particularly loud thunderclap that shook everyone's homes. They all thought it was directly over their house but they were all miles apart. I have three more encounters which occurred after this first one. I'm pretty sure this happened October 1997. No later than 1998. When I was a kid, I had a terrifying experience which although I have grown out of, I still remember it and it kind of bring me chills. One day I was sleeping, and had the habit of covering my face while sleeping, I woke in the middle of the night somewhere between 2 hours or 3 hours, so I took the cover off cause it was hot and then I saw a huge dark figure with big horns standing in the middle of the room, I was terrified and screamed from the fear and immediately covered my face under the blanket which I stayed under crying from fear till morning, when I had the courage to take off the cover I was relieved that nothing was there anymore. I always thinking that maybe I am just imagining because your brain can play tricks on you in the darkness and I was specifically scared of the idea of ghosts and demons and was afraid to sleep alone as a kid, so maybe it was not real. But what I can tell you is that I was not dreaming that night and what I described is exactly what I saw. If any had any experiences like this share, it is good to talk about it so we can feel better move on. Cause ever since that time I didn't experience any of that not even sleep paralysis, so whatever it is, it feeds over your fear or it is just a fearful kid's hallucination in the dark. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.